badass summer meets that you need to check out. Oh, and some pole vault tips and tricks. Welcome to the pole vault vlog where we talk about everything stick flinging. <laughs> Have I used that one yet? Commercial time, commercial time. Everybody loves commercial time. This vlog yeah. is supported by 33 wonderful viewers of this vlog through Patreon. We still haven't reached my goal to keep this vlog afloat, but I'll give it until August and then I'll figure it out from there. Patreon. Team Hoot Camps, we have five of them in the works. First one's in Georgia, then Montana, and then another one in Montana, and then we're in Shelbyville, Kentucky. Bing, bang, boom. Head over to this link below or in the description and check it out come to my camps. I'll help you all hire. It's not too late to start training plans, guys. If you start this week or the week after, it will carry you all the way through the summer and you will have a head start on all of the competition. Feel great and be fast. You'll be faster than a turtle glued to a cheetah. <laughs> it's pretty fast. Those other turtles didn't know what happened. But for real, it is what you do in the off season that determines who you are in season. So check those out. Let's talk about some summer meets. A few weeks ago, I reached out to the pole vault community via Facebook and conglomerated, conglomerated, collected, and collected a list of all the summer meets around the country. Reggie Henderson and USPVA were kind enough to organize the data, put them in order, and make it easy for you guys to find. Head over to USPVA.org and collect your Hogwarts diploma for navigating the magic of the internet. And then go to the meets and fly over some bars like they do in Quidditch. I don't even like Harry Potter that much, but I think Harry Potter jokes are hilarious. One group I met in Reno was the Jump and Jam and Street Vault and they gave me this shirt. It's so bright the exposure's all messed up. This is actually green, not white. Here, I'll show you. There. I can't see my face, but you can see my shirt. Now, I've never been to the Jump and Jam and meet. Looks like that. But they are awesome. But all my friends said it was the best and they gave me this shirt. It's really bright. Blind people can see it. I need sunglasses just to look at it. It makes construction workers jealous. You'll get a reverse farmer's tan because this is as bright as the sun and when you wear it, it sunburns the parts of your skin. Dumb joke. It's impossible to get lost when you're wearing it. Everyone can see you all the time. For real, they're really awesome. They gave me a few extra shirts to give away. So anyone who buys a training program this week within Wednesday to Wednesday, I will send you, there's only two smalls. I will send you one of these awesome shirts along with your training plan. How about that? But it's messing up my exposure, so I'm gonna take it off for now. <gasps> Achoo! you! Better. <coughs> I'm okay. Let's do some pole vault news. <laughs> Jen Scher at the age of 36 breaks a Prefontaine record, beating girls more than 10 years younger than her. She's a freak. It's fun to watch. Jen Scher is awesome. Talking really high. And Sam Kendricks is on. Fire! Poof! This is fire. <laughs> but Sam Kendricks has been jumping consistently over 580 or 19 feet in good conditions, crappy conditions. At the Prefontaine Classic, he won that thing. And then he won all of our hearts kissing this lady, his wife, on national television. Oh, would you look at that? Oh, Sam. Whoop! Mondo jumped 18.8 at this meet, 570, and took second just behind Kendricks. And don't forget, he just graduated high school. Kids a freak too. And then we got another kid who just graduated high school too, Casey Lightfoot, who jumped 185562. And if that isn't enough, he jumped over 18 feet seven meets in a row. Seven. Good lord holy help me what am I looking at? I don't know. That's the end of news. Pew. All right, guys, last week I reached out to all the Patreon members and asked what they wanted me to make a video about because I'm letting them decide. And this is what they chose. Let's talk about one of the most important parts of pole vault technique that doesn't get talked about enough, pole speed. Runway speed will always be the most important part of the pole vault with a close second being pole speed besides being safe, because if you break your legs or die, it's really hard to pole vault. Pole speed is the speed in which the pole goes from an angle to the vertical position. Pole speed is the speed in which the pole goes from an angle to the vertical position. Now the trick is to always try to get the pole to vertical as fast as you can. Always. Now there are a few things that affect pole speed. Number one, grip. Number two, runway speed. 
Number three is the pole weight or the flex if it's bending. Number four is being tall at takeoff. Number five is jumping. And number six is swinging. So here's how I like to visualize it. The goal is to jump high, and the three settings you can manipulate are the grip, the run, and the pull. Now ideally, if you max out all of these settings, you're going to have the best time. You're going to jump the highest. But it's not that easy because every pole vaulter is different and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. Every vault, arch, or rainbow is different based on your grip. This is the pole, this is the box. Our goal is to get the pole to vertical as fast as we can. Here's a bunch of ways how to do that. Runway speed. The fastest you are when you hit the pole, the faster you can move the pole. Grip. If you hold lower, your arch is smaller, so it's easier to get the pole to vertical. The higher you hold, the longer the arch becomes and the harder it is to get the pole to vertical. Grip. Grip, 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 grip. The pole flex or the weight. Say you're holding on the top of the pole, but it's kind of difficult. This is why fiberglass vaulters ended up jumping higher. Because once they could start bending the pole, they pulled it down and the pole bent to a different level. The pole bends, moves to the different arc, swings to vertical, and then it shoots up to vertical once it gets to the center. If the pole's too big for you, it won't bend, and then you're gonna have a harder time gripping higher and all that other stuff. Watch my adjustment video to have that make some more sense. Being tall. If you're short and have to start from here, your arch is gonna be longer. But if you're taller and get to start with the pole already more at an angle, then you only have to go to here. Shorter vaulters, taller vaulters. Jumping, this is also true for jumping. Jumping does a lot of different things. It can make you taller, which makes you start a little bit higher up on your arc. It can also make it so you add more speed to move the pole faster, just like the run does. And then swinging. Swinging does all sorts of great things. It helps move the pole vertical really fast. If you have a powerful swing, it helps bend the pole more so you can come down a couple of these arches and fling up. It just does a lot of really good things. All of these things affect the pole speed. A combination of a bunch of those things helps the pole speed too. What can you learn here? One of my favorite cues is trying to knock the crossbar down with both hands. The crossbar would be right here. Why is that cue so awesome? Because because if you're running really fast up towards the crossbar, you're gonna have some good runway speed. It makes you taller because you're reaching your arms up towards the crossbar. You usually jump off the ground because the crossbar is up nice and high, so you have to jump up towards the crossbar. Because you're jumping up and towards the crossbar and moving your hands really aggressively, it usually bends the pole. So moving your hands towards the crossbar adds more energy, helps with that. And because you're moving your arms so aggressively, it helps with your swing. Now, like I said, that's my favorite cue because out of all of these things that we had here, out of all six of those, throwing your hands up towards a crossbar, hit five of them. Last thing I'll add that I feel like is really important, but too much pull speed can be a bad thing too because then you pass the point of vertical too quick and then you blow into the crossbar. That's why there's this perfect balance where you wanna land right in the middle. You have to find what works best for you and figure out your own little puzzle to make you jump the highest. Does this help? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Let's review some videos. All right, first video is Reagan, and oh my God, 10-7, and she's hitting the pole so good with solid arms. That's hard to do, most people don't do that, so I'm thoroughly impressed. Dogs are barking in the background. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Is that she hits it well, but it looks like there's just not enough movement with those arms again. The pole stops moving to vertical. So how can we get the pole speed to move forward? I sent her a couple more invert videos, and then I talked about that hula hoop thing again. And I know a lot of people have been asking about the hula hoop thing. I will put it on the Patreon website so people can see that. Yeah, check it out. Killer jump, like, oh my gosh, though. Good run, early plant, plants up. It's just that second half of the vault. Look how pumped you are. I like watching it. All right, next video is of Savannah. 
killer jump. I love everything about it again. Like, look at good slow to fast. You're attacking the box great. Again, your arms are up so early. What's with you guys? I don't even have to talk about the plant today. So the only issue I'm really seeing is we're just keeping pressure on that bottom arm too long, which is making it hard to invert. So most people when they try and invert like that, they keep pushing on the pole thinking they'll invert, but this arm has to come in eventually. So uh, I sent her one of the invert videos I made a while back. It should be on the sides, one of these sides if you guys want to check it out. And it kind of gets the motion of when to pull that arm in and the timing. It's more of a timing thing. Are you jumping with Jen Sure? Is that Jen Sure back here? And that's Rick Sure right there. Yeah, listen to them. Whatever they have to say, they know what they're talking about. So if they agree with me, cool. If not, forget everything I said and listen to Rick and Jen, <laughs> world record holder, coach, and athlete. Makes sense, right? Killer jump. I love everything about it. You're a rock star. All right, last but not least, we have James. And James is a Masters vaulter competing in the Spain World Games this year. Uh, he sent a video a while back about... Um, I think last year and we worked on this plant a little bit and I think it looks a million times better. Um, is what I'm seeing though is just two things. I think he's gripping a little too high in that pole so it's not moving in a little bit. You know, that hump is just a little too high so it's bending a little too much not moving in if we're talking about pole speed stuff. So the pole speed wants to move, it just can't. So either grip down or go up a pole and keep your grip the same. That'll help with this jump at least. And then part two is just the invert stuff. We have body here and pole here and then one leg shooting this way and the other shooting that way and then I call it like fireworks there's just too much stuff going in different directions so the farther your body gets away from the pole the less energy you have so the idea is to stay tight to the pole and be more of a bottle rocket so you get all of that energy instead of this split off energy going everywhere I hope that makes sense man but it's another sick jump so turn that right leg in keep it over your left leg and that should maybe keep some stuff together for you and then good luck in Spain, man. I want to know how it goes. I'm really excited to hear about it. Thanks for sending videos, guys. Boom! Guys, if you really like these videos, think about subscribing down below. If you don't like them, don't subscribe because it's going to be more of this type of stuff. Like it if you liked them. If you don't like them, like it twice. It sends me hate that way. I know I, I sound like a broken record, but Patreon is what keeps these videos going. So if and you like these videos, cool. Go to Patreon and support it. We have till August. And then I have to make a tough decision there. If you want your video review, do not send me social media things. Uh, go to team shootcom slash gear and I will hook you up. Come to my camps. I'd love to see ya. And remember, there are many ways to pull vault. Try what I said. If it works, cool. If it doesn't, cool. Try something else. I don't really care. I just want you to jump higher. I'm just trying to show you a couple extra doors you might not be aware that are there. Like Narnia. There might be a door in a closet, which in the wardrobe. I don't remember where that door was. But it leads to Narnia, which are where PRs are made. Okay, we need to get out of here. Life is meant to be experienced in curiosity. We'll get you that. I will see you there next week. Patreon members, I'm about to send you a message.